Now here's a practical application for that crosswind component chart that you've been using. Um, reminder here, I've got crosswind in brown here on the horizontal axis, and in the vertical axis I've got the headwind in blue. And if you haven't seen this chart before, remember these radial lines, these represent the angle of the wind, and these arcs, these arcs of course represent the total wind. And of course we know that we've got crosswind and headwind respectively. Now over here I've got a compass rose that's aligned to magnetic, yes magnetic north, magnetic north, magnetic west, magnetic south. Oh don't worry we'll get enough of the difference true and magnetic, we'll get that during cross-country navigation. But right now that's this is what you need to know. We are going to figure out how this, you know, how to use this chart with this information. Let's draw the runway. We need to sketch a picture of what's going on. This is runway 0624. And I'm going to I'm going to draw it just like this and say there's two sides of this runway. You could be taking off on this end, or you could be on this end. Remember, we are on. We're going to line up here. When we are lined up here, the numbers we're seeing are 0, 06. That's the numbers that are going to appear here down on the runway because that's the direction we're facing. I know this is so confusing, but stay with me on this. When your airplane is lined up right here, you're not seeing 2, 4 on those numbers. You're seeing 0, 06 because you're headed 0, 06, 0 degrees and you're lining up your directional gyro to make sure it's consistent with the runway heading. Now, if we want to figure out how much our wind is, all we've got to do is say, all right, well, there's our wind. It's coming in from 110 degrees. And then I could figure out, hmm, that must be 50 degrees off the sign, or a 50 degree quartering headwind. Now, we said something before that this is approximate, and not to get all excited about multiple decimal places with a calculator. And here's another reason. This runway, 06, that can have variation. It could be over here. It could be over here. It can be plus or minus almost 5 degrees. Because remember, runway headings are only numbered to the nearest 10 degrees. So 06 could really mean 62. It could really mean 57. You don't know for certain. And it shouldn't be that close. You shouldn't be basing your life on that small margin. So we're just going to work as if it's headed exactly at 060. So there we are. We're lined up on runway 6. What do we say? Runway 6. That's right. The wind is 110 at 42 knots. So let's figure this out. We did a little arithmetic and we said, well, really not that much. We said 110 minus 60 and that is 50, 50 degrees. So we find our 50 degree line right there. Oh, no, I, ah, all over the place. This is 50 and we find our 42 degree arc. I see the 40 is thick right here and I'm seeing right there a 42. And that's what I'm looking for, right there. That's the intersection of 50 degrees and 42, uh, or 42 knots of total wind. And let's see, well, make those things appear right there. I'm going to read from the graph. This is 25, so up two more, that's 27. That's going to be a headwind component of 27 knots. Notice. This crosswind is bigger than the headwind. I'm reading down here 30. This is 35. I'm reading 1, 2. As close as I can read, 32 knots. So there you go. You've got a pretty serious crosswind there because the wind is coming at you from a 50 degree angle. 